I would like to welcome you to this Vastra lecture, Pre Universal Architecture Teaching. Before I begin with the lecture, I would like to introduce myself briefly. My name is Johann Burger. I live in Bühl, near Baden Baden in Germany. But I grew up in Iran, South Tyrol, Italy. Years ago, together with my wife, Valeria, I completed a training course to become a Vastu Geobiology Consultant with architect Dr. Prabhat Bodha from India. Personally, I came across Indian philosophy quite early. I started Transcendental Meditation at the age of 13. Years later, I also became a meditation teacher. And already in the 90s, I heard my spiritual master, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, speak about Sapatya Veda or Vastu. About 20 years ago, we met Dr. Prabhat Bodhar. He was an architect, engineer and town planner. He was engaged in this interesting knowledge for over 40 years. Unfortunately, he passed away in December 2021. However, he deserves our sincere gratitude for his research or his knowledge on how to energetically correct houses, flats, but also companies that they are not built according to the last two principles. Below we see this beautiful temple of the Oneness Group in Andhra Pradesh, India. Prabhat was chief architect of a 40-member team, and this temple was built from 400 workers in a period of 10 years. What is Vastu? Vastu, the ancient Indian architectural doctrine, means bringing buildings and people into harmony with nature. What Prabhat has found in his many travels around the globe is that actually all ancient cultures, Romans, Greeks, Egyptians, up to the Incas and Mayas and ancient Chinese, all had incorporated the principles or laws of Vastu in their palaces and temples. Here we see a picture of the Villa Rotonda in Vicenza, designed by architect Andrea Palladio. Andrea Palladio has become very famous, especially in the Veneto area, for his beautiful villas and palaces. We know from Andrea Palladio that he had studied the ancient texts of Marco Vitruvio. Marco Vitruvio, again, a very well-known Roman architect, who is known to have studied the ancient texts of Vastu. It is also said that Vastu is actually the original teaching of Feng Shui, and that this knowledge was spread throughout the Far East by the Buddhist monks from India. Now I would like to briefly introduce you to two projects in which my wife and I are directly or indirectly involved. The first project is in India, in Tamil Nadu, where we have built a small Ayurveda and yoga retreat together with friends, which was built according to the principles of Vastu. The second project is in Bühl, near Baden-Baden, Germany, where we built our new company building in 2010. There we asked Dr. Prabhat Bora to help us with the planning. This building was also built entirely according to Vastu principles. A very nice quote from Prabhat is, when we have a house planned and built according to Vastu principles, it does yoga for us. Why? Because a Vastu house centers us, brings us to our center. A Vastu house should give us energy again as well as the necessary peace and balance. Why? In the Vastu teaching, certain principles of nature or laws of nature are integrated into the planning, such as the five elements, fire, water, air, 
there is ether and earth, but also the golden proportions play a big role in vast architecture. Everything created by nature, that is, the plant world, the animal world, and also the humans are created exactly according to the golden proportions. It is also said that there are three bodies in ancient Indian architectural teachings. The first body is our physical body. The second body is our willing. The third body is the universe. These three bodies must be in harmony with each other. Otherwise, it can have a very negative effect on our general well-being. Nowadays, unfortunately, most buildings are not longer built in harmony with nature, which can have a very negative effect on our health, on interpersonal relationships, but also on prosperity. However, this does not mean that we should not build in a modern way. It is only important that the principles of Vastu are integrated into modern architecture. Another very important point that Prabhat has mentioned again and again in his lectures is that we must first recognize our body and understand how our body is constructed. In the ancient Indian natural healing medicine Ayurveda, it is said that there are 72,000 nadis in our body. The 72,000 nadis are tiny, fine axes of energy that are normally centered. These tiny energy axes are even finer than a spider's web and are divided three times. It is said that in the innermost of this energy axis is the ohm sound, the primordial sound. As already mentioned, this energy axis must normally run centered in the body. When we are exposed to certain interference fields, such as earth rays, electro smoke, mobile phone radiations, etc., the energy axis shift. Even if a house is not built according to vast principles, this can have a very strong influence on our nadis. Dr. Prabhat Bodha has based his whole correction method on this energy axis. Now, two words about magnetic grid lines and water winds. The magnetic grid lines normally run exactly according to the cardinal directions, north-south and east-west. Unfortunately, the magnetic grid lines are still little researched, but it is known that animals oriented themselves according to the magnetic ley lines. Magnetic grid lines have a similar negative influence as water winds on our health and on our psyche. There are different magnetic grid lines with a distance between 2 and 4 meters between 4 and 6 meters and between 8 and 10 meters. Water winds are found in irregular ways in nature. You find water winds mainly in the mountain or in hilly terrain. And I think that one or two of you have certainly noticed when you have gone for a walk in nature that there are often trees that have an irregular growth. Either they have a twisted growth, a tricky growth, or an angular growth, or they are also partially gnarled. This irregular growth comes mainly from the water winds or magnetic grid lines. You can imagine how a water wind can affect our health if it makes a tree grow in a totally irregular way over many years. Here below we see the laser antenna, with which we can detect magnetic grid lines and water winds. But this laser antenna also helps us to determine what is out of balance in a building. And it also helps us afterwards 
after the correction in the billings. To determine whatever we have done everything correctly, whether we have not overlooked anything. Now I come to the four most important principles in Vastu architecture. The first and most important principle Prabhat used to say is the orientation of the buildings. Buildings should be oriented exactly north-south, east-west. But the division of space is also very important. The room layout should be according to the course of the sun or according to the five elements. The second principle is the golden proportions. As I have already briefly mentioned, or are multiple of the proportions. On the left we see Leonardo da Vinci's study, The Vitruvian Man, which is mainly about the theory of proportions. And the golden proportion played a big role in the Middle Age, not only in art and architecture, but also in crafts. I also believe that one of the secrets why we are so magically attracted to these palaces and cathedrals, to these works of art, is because they have been created in harmony with nature. The third principle is the form. Form comes from the proportions and is of course also oriented towards the purpose of the buildings. Fourthly, we have the materials which play a more important role today than in the past, because toxic materials are also used today, though it is interesting to note how in the past materials were used in buildings, the same way as they were created in nature. For example, wood. Wood is used in such a way that the root is downwards, the cone upwards, the inside of the tree to the inside of the building and the outside to the outside. Even when the stones was broken out of the rock, one paid scrupulous attention to how one broke it out and marked the stone exactly. What was below, what was above, what was outside, and what was inside. If you use these materials in the right way, they give you much more energy than they normally do. Now I come to the five elements. As already mentioned, the building is divided into five elements and also the different activities are assigned to the different elements. We have in the southeast the element of fire. This area is assigned to the legs. And in the fire or air element, activities can be planned that have to do with heat, such as the kitchen, the sauna, the boiler room, the electricity meter. In the southwest we have the water element, a very dominant element. We know that 70% of our body is water, but also 70% of the earth's surface is water. This area is assigned to the trunk, and because it is a very dominant element, the master bedroom is planned in this area. Or, if you have a company, then the executive office could also be there. If you have a multi-store building, then the production area or storage space could also be in this area. On the other hand, in the northwest, we have the air element. This area is assigned to the head. The guest room or children's room is planned in this area. You can also plan the living room, the garage. And if you have a company, the finished products could be stored in this area. If the finished products are stored in this area, they can be sold quickly and well. Whereas in the northeast, we have the space eater element. 
this area is associated with the whole body, including the psyche. In this area, we have a children's room or a meditation room, but it could also be the living room. In the center, on the other hand, you have the Brahmastan, the earth element. This area should be completely free, should not be obstructed, and there should be a light incidence from the roof to the ground floor, so that the earth energy and the cosmic energy can unite. Right-handed and left-handed energy. This is a very important element that Prabhat has found out in the course of his research. If you have a slope to the north or east, you have a right-handed energy. Whereas we have a slope facing south or west, we have a left-handed energy. A river or a lake nearby can also change this energy flow. On the right side of the river, we have a right-turned energy. And on the left side of the river, we have a left-turned energy. According to this right-left rotation, we have to adjust the whole planning. Here, for example, we see the rotation of the staircase. To the right of the river, the stairs should run up to the right. To the left of the river, they should run up to the left. The stairs always have the simultaneous task of transporting energies from the lower floors to the upper floor. But if the course of the stairs is wrong, then the energy cannot flow properly to the upper floors. Also, if the stairs or the individual steps are half or completely open, then the energy does not flow to the upper floor. Here Prabhat has developed a method of correction so that even with such disturbance the energy can flow to the upper floors. Here we see that when we build in the plane north of the equator, we normally have a right turned energy. And south of the equator, we have a left turned energy. And here you can see how the divisions of space is assigned when we have a right-handed energy. Then you have all the elements that we find here in the south with all left-handed energy, the north and vice versa. So they mirror each other. What never changes is the east and the west, or the Brahmastan. Now we come to another very important point, which is toilets. As you know, in the past, toilets were always placed outside, probably because people knew that negative energies could enter the house through the toilets. However, since it would be very impractical to place the toilets outside, especially in areas where it is colder, we may pay special attention where to place them when we build and plan buildings. Toilets should never be planned in the corners, never in the Brahmastan, never in the center of the building, and if you have a right turned energy, never in the north, and if you have a left turned energy, never in the south. The north in a right turned energy and the south in the left turned energy is the area of finance. If a toilet is planned in this area, then the money just flows out at the grains as it comes in the door. Also, in the space of the etheric elements or in the Brahmastan, one should never plan for a toilet especially in the ether element, it can have a very strong influence on the partnership or on the relationship, but also on the health or on the psyche. Now I would like to introduce you 
to the energetic feeling corrections by architect Prabhat Poda, which he has developed over the last decades. Thanks to the Lech antenna, he has found that symbols and shapes are very powerful and can be used to neutralize negative radiations. We used his spiral of O4, which is symbolic for the non mission. These four spirals are placed on marble stones the size of sugar cubes, in copper leaves and on copper corners. In order to understand even better how the symbols or auxiliary materials work, Babat explained to us the following. This combination between symbols, material, alignment of the materials and punctual application of the materials work like acupuncture. He often spoke also of the acupuncture of the building. What exactly is checked or corrected in the building now? First and foremost we always look at the sleeping and working places, because we spend a lot of time there. These places are mainly checked for water wheels and magnetic gate lines, but no door drop or mirror should fall on the bed or workplace even if the doors are closed. The doors have the task of transforming static energy into dynamic energy, even if the doors are closed. They have an influence, or the mirror also have an influence on our nadis, on our energy axis, which are shifted at that moment. That's why rooms are always corrected, even when doors or mirrors fall on the bed as you are about to see on this next slide. Doors should never fall on the bed, neither should mirrors. If we were planning a new building, doors and mirrors are planned in a way that they never point at the bed. With this example, you can also see a water winds or magnetic grid lines can run in the sleeping area. Of course, these magnetic grid lines and water winds can run in different ways in the sleeping area. Here we also had a very interesting experience in Milan, Italy. We were invited by a woman who worked in a bank and who has had severe sleeping problems for many, many years. She kept waking up at 2 a.m. and could not longer sleep. After analyzing her bedroom, we actually found the full program in her bedroom. She had placed the bed right in the middle of the bedroom. The entrance door that opened directly on the bed even the balcony door pointed directly at the bed. She had also put a large mirror in the foot area and in the head area. Last but not least, we also detect a magnetic grid line and water winds in the sleeping area. After this correction, she was able to sleep. The effect of our correct Corrections vary. There are people who are very sensitive, who already noticed during our corrections that something energetically changes. There are people who can sleep better the very next day, or in the following days, in the following weeks, or if the problem was very strong and serious, it can set in the following months. For example, if the hoop is not integrated in the fire or air element, the hoop and oven must always be corrected. Also the microwaves, which of course, as we know, is not ideal. 
All the air extractors and drains need to be corrected as well. In a bathroom, of course, all the drains, but also the doors, should be corrected energetically, so that negative energies cannot enter the living area, or so that positive energies are not withdrawn from the living area. As you probably know, in the past, double leaf windows and doors were always installed in houses. Today, only single leaf doors and single leaf windows are predominantly used, partly for practical reasons, but also partly for financial reasons. With double leaf windows and doors, the energy can flow evenly into the room. Since this is not the case with single leaf doors and windows, all single leaf doors and windows are corrected to this effect. Of course, all cordless devices, all radio controlled devices, mobile phones, WLAN, computers, televisions, all screens, alarm systems, all wireless devices, such as tablets, computers, printers, keyboards, etc. are corrected. But even if you have high voltage line or mobile phone masts in the vicinity, the influence is neutralized. I have to add something here. Of course, we can't remove the radiation, otherwise we would have mobile phone reception anymore. But we can neutralize the influence of this high voltage and mobile phone radiations on our energy system, on the NADIs, so that they remain centered. Now a few more practical tips for you at home. One should never position sacred pictures or objects in bathrooms or toilets. Nor should one fix them on the walls, nor on the outer walls, or on the doors of the toilets, as the cosmic energy is withdrawn. One should always give sacred images or objects in a dignified place. Also those Buddha statues that are often found in bathrooms today to create a beautiful, pleasant energy should not be placed there. One should also be very careful with mask, statues and art objects in general. Art objects depicting aggressive animals or wars create bad energy in the house. Even with the art objects themselves, one never knows what symbolism these art objects have, with what intention they are made or even the state of mind of the artist. If the artist is not well, this energy can have a negative effect on the inhabitants. Now I would like to present a very beautiful experience of the correction of a farm in the Ulten Valley in South Tyrol, which for 10 years had great problems with the rearing of the calves and also with their cows. The majority of the calves died right after birth. The owners also consulted various experts. Some came from the local area, others from Switzerland and from Germany. They did the feeding analysis and other examinations, but they did really come up with what the cows had. The owner explained to us that they built this new stable about 10 years before. It had been built even closer to a power line that runs directly across the farm. After we had analyzed the stable with our Lech antenna, we found that it was not only very strong influence of the high voltage, but that we also found a magnetic grid line exactly where the cows were standing in addition to the water winds. We had an influence of the doors and two boxes were caused by another magnetic grid. 
After we told the farmer what we had found, she told us that exactly where we had found this bad influence, they could not leave a cow standing for more than two weeks because it would be so bad for them. And then made all the corrections. We were in the Ulten Valley two weeks later because we also corrected the farmhouse of the property. The farmer was just standing in front of the stable and asked us into the stable. He told us, look at the cows, they all have smooth coats now. It seems that your correction are already working. We are also in contact with the farmers in the following months. And in that following year, seven calves were born and all of them survived. That was a great joy for us because it proved that the correction has nothing to do with placebo effect. We had a second case in a second stable where there was also a very strong influence of an electric distributor which was in front of the stable. In addition, there was a strong water vein. We neutralized all this, but it was a free stall where all cows roam freely in the barn. The farmers opened the door every morning so that the cows could walk out of the meadow, but after the correction, the cows did not want to go out. That was really a very amazing experience. Well, now I would like to introduce to you another example of a hotel correction, the Hotel Leidelhof in Innichen, South Tyrol. Dr. Prabhat Boda personally made the correction here more than 10 years ago because the hotel owner was not satisfied with the occupancy rate. At that time, it was only a three star hotel. Prabhat found that the proportion were not right and made all the corrections necessary, which I mentioned earlier. The hotel was since extended twice. From a three-star hotel it became a four-star S hotel. In the meantime, they have a 90% occupancy rate. Here you can see that if the problems really arise from the architecture of the building, you have a very big impact with this correction. Of course, the general well-being is not only due to the architecture. We also know that diet has a great influence, exercise, stress and so on. Of course, the stars do, as you know, but Babat has told us again and again how strong the influence of a building can be on our lives. He has noticed this over his many years of correcting worldwide. We have also been working in this field for years and have made hundreds of corrections with very positive and beautiful results. We are now at the end of the lecture. Thank you for your attention. If anyone is interested in a correction, please feel free to email us the plans of your house or flat, indicating the size and showing the north and also the address, as we can also use Google Earth to analyze the position of the buildings. At the end, I would also like to show all the points that we are correcting or analyzing. Thank you again for your attention and I wish you all the best. See you soon. Hey.